Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. An inexpensive vernier throttle assembly coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's video, we will be reviewing the Gear Falcon Sim vernier throttle assembly for Microsoft Flight Simulator and other various sims. Before we get started with the review, I just have one disclaimer. Gear Falcon Sim did not send this product for review and I did pay for this with my own money. I will post links down below in the description if you would like to pick one up. However, there is no affiliate link. Oh, and if you missed the intro video I did for this series of products, I would recommend to go and check that out first. It will explain how this series is going to be set up and the reason why I'm doing it in the first place. Links for that will also be down below, or you can click up here. In today's video, I will first be going over a quick unboxing of the product. We'll then take a closer look at some of the hardware. We'll then jump over to the developer's website, take a look at the other models that they offer, as well as the pricing for the unit. I will then go over some of the mounting solutions for the product. We will calibrate in Windows, and then we'll spawn into Microsoft Flight Simulator so I can show you this in action. At the end of the video, I will go over an issue that I had with the product, and then I will talk to you about how the developer handled that situation, which is one of the main reasons why I'm doing this review in the first place. I would like to give Rob over at Gear Falcon Sim a big thank you for sending this out and also taking care of my issues. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Okay, so let's jump into a quick unboxing for the product. Upon opening the package, we are greeted with a great pamphlet to give some information about the various other models that they have available. When we go to the first page, we have some mounting instructions as well as other mounting options that they have. Now, if we turn one more page, he also has a color instructional on how to set up all of the key binds in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The next thing we have is a mounting bracket. We also have a 10 foot USB cable so that you can put this quite a distance away from your PC. Now that we are down to the throttle itself, you can see that it is nicely packed with bubble wrap. All right, so this is it. Most of this is 3D printed components with some of the more stressed components are gonna be in metal. So as you can see here, the shafts on each of these are looks like to be their stainless steel. The model that I purchase is going to be vernier on the pitch as well as the mixture. The throttle is going to be a friction throttle that's adjustable by this wheel right here. This unit is six and a half inches wide and it is six and a quarter inches long. The thickness is almost an inch and a half. All right, so as you can see, we are just about six millimeters in diameter for each of these shafts. All right, so now let's take a look at how the vernier action works on each of these axes. Push the button in, we can do a major adjustment. We release the button and it locks into place. And at that point, we can just screw in or screw out to adjust each of these axes. This will give us very fine adjustment while we're in the aircraft. This is going to be a friction throttle. So we adjust the friction with this knob right here. On the top of the unit, this is where the bracket that they included with the product will clip into this little dovetail joint. And then this can be screwed into your home cockpit. And they also offer a clamp option on their website. But we'll go over that here in just a second. And if we take a look at the back, we have a nice label and here is our USB attachment. Overall, I would say that this feels pretty sturdy in the hand. It's not gonna be as heavy as your metal counterpart, but hey, this is probably a fourth of the cost. The last thing I wanna do before we jump over to the website is measure each of the knobs so you get an idea on just how big they are. So it looks like we are 32 millimeters on the mixture, 31, to 32 on the prop and on the throttle just about 31 millimeters on the throttle and I'll try to get a close-up here at some of the 3d printing now this particular unit was actually sent back to me because I had an issue with it 
which I'll go over here towards the end of the video. All right, so now let's address the elephant in the room, and that is, what is the price? Let's hop over to the developer's website and let's take a look. On the screen is the Etsy store for Gear Falcon Sim and their particular products. What you see here is the actual product that I had purchased and the price for this is $144 plus shipping. The second option they have available is a vernier throttle, propeller pitch, and mixture. You can also see that they are set up in a little bit different configuration. The last option that we have here is a carb throttle and mixture. Now, if we scroll down and take a look at the right hand side, it gives us a little bit more information about the product. Depending on which model you choose, you will get a throttle control with approximately 70 millimeters of travel, and that includes an adjustable tension knob. The model with the vernier throttle is also available, having a 60 millimeter range of motion. The pitch and mixture controls they have approximately 60 millimeters of travel. With the carb heat model, this can be used as an axis or a push button. Because of that, the range is limited to about 50 millimeters of motion. For those of you who have a more realistic cockpit with a panel, they also make a bezel to go around each of these units to make them more integrated into your SIM cockpit. One last thing before we jump off the website is we're gonna click on their name here and this will give us all the other products that they have available. They have throttle assemblies with flap controls integrated. They have singular flap controls as well as individual throttle and mixture controls. Okay, so now let's hop over to the cockpit. We will mount everything up, connect it to the PC, and then we will do the windows calibration on the unit to make sure everything is working properly. Once we're done with that, we'll hop in the sim and give you a demo. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to calibrate this in windows as a windows gaming device. To do that, we're gonna head down to the search bar and we're gonna go up to the control panel. So you can just start typing control panel and it'll pop up for you. Once we're here, we're gonna go down to hardware and sound, and then we're gonna click on devices and printers. This will show you all the USB devices that we have connected to our PC. From here, you just wanna find the device that is labeled Gear Falcon. So we're going to right click and then go to game controller settings. Once you're here, we'll scroll down to where it says Gear Falcon, and then we're gonna click on properties. This should display all of the buttons or axes that are in the unit itself. So for those that are using the one with the carb model that has a push button for the carb, that should show up here as well. To calibrate the unit, we will go up to the settings tab and then down to calibrate. A setup wizard will populate and we will just hit next through this, next through that. And now we can calibrate each of the axes that are on the throttle itself. All right, so it looks like the X axis is gonna be the throttle. So we're just going to move this throughout the complete axis a couple times. Once we're finished, we'll hit next. Now we need to find the Y axis. There we go. The Y axis is the pitch. Again, we'll go through the entire range, hit next. And this should be the mixture. So we'll go through the entire range again. And then we'll hit next, finish. And now as you can see on the screen, all of the axes have been adjusted and they are moving through the entire axis range. Now this is very important that you do this on any of the models that you purchase. Once we're done, we'll hit apply, hit okay, and that's it. All right, so that's all the calibration done in Windows. We'll now fire up Microsoft Flight Simulator get some key binds done, and then we'll show you it in action. All right, so now that we're in a sim, before we go over any of the key bindings, I wanna refer back to the book that they gave us with the unit. On the one side, it will show us all the key binds, and on the other side, we'll give you all of the sensitivity settings. All right, so let's start mapping some key binds. We'll hit the escape button, we'll go to control options, and then once we're in control, you need to find the throttle assembly that we just installed. There we go, there's a gear falcon. Now let's start binding each of these axes. We'll first go over to the search by name and we're gonna type in throttle. Once we do that, anything that's labeled throttle should populate and we just wanna go down and find throttle axis. There we go, 
So we're gonna click on throttle axis. We're gonna hit start scanning and then move your throttle in and out. It should populate that key bind and then we'll hit validate. We also wanna make sure that we untick the reverse axis and then we can hit apply and save. Now, one thing that you will notice here, if I start moving the axis in and out, it does not move on the screen. Now, I'm not sure exactly why that's happening, but if we go back into the sim and take a look at the throttle, the throttle is moving just fine throughout the axes. All right, so now that we have got that one mapped out, let's go ahead and map out the prop and the mixture. So for this, we will just type in prop and we're gonna go down and find the propeller axis. Click, we'll click start scanning and then move the pitch axis. That should populate, we'll hit validate. Again, you wanna make sure that you untick reverse axis. And as you see here on the screen, the axis is not showing up here either. Search by name, and we'll type in mixture. Now for this one, we wanna find mixture axis minus 100 to 100 positive. And there we go. So we have a couple options here for mixture. There is a zero to 100 and a minus 100 to positive 100. That's the one that we want. So we'll click there, start scanning, and we'll move in and out on our mixture axis, hit validate. And again, if reverse axis is ticked, we will untick, hit apply, and hop back into the sim. And as you can see there, the mixture is working just fine as well. So don't be alarmed if you find the axes are not moving in the control panel. They will work just fine once you get into the simulator. So we'll just run through this one more time and make sure everything is properly calibrated. All right, so as you can see, I think everything is calibrated properly. Everything is working inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's hop back into the studio and then I will go over my final thoughts about the product. And I wanna go over the little issue that I had with the unit and how Rob over at Gear Falcon helped me out. All right, so now I wanna go over a little issue that I had with the unit when I first received it. On the mixture axis, I had a little bit of up and down movement on that shaft. I also had a little bit of in and out play on that mixture axis as well. So I reached out to Rob over at Gear Falcon and I told him what was going on. I shot a little video for him so he could see exactly the issue I was having. He then advised me to package everything back up and he was going to send me a label so that I can ship it back to him and they could take a look at it. Now that entire process of me packaging it back up, sending it, and then getting it back took about a week and a half, somewhere around there. Now, when I got the unit back, that's where I was a little bit surprised. When I opened the box, I had a really nice note in here from Rob over at Gear Falcon Sim. Now, this is what really surprised me with the service that I got from Rob, is that not only did he fix the unit, but he told me exactly what he had fixed in the note that he gave to me. Not to mention, there was another problem that he had found once he got into it. So let me just read you what he says here. He replaced the mixture control, replaced a broken throttle that was inside, and then there was some missing mounting brackets that he had also put in there. And honestly, that was my fault because I didn't think he wanted the mounting brackets back. But hey, he added another mounting bracket for me because he thought that it wasn't included with the original purchase, which it was. So that's my fault, Rob, on that one. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is customer service at its top. And you don't find service like that from every developer out there. So I want to give a big shout out to Rob over at Gear Falcon Sim. I really appreciate the customer service that you had given me on this issue and I will be a customer in the future. Links for this product and his other ones will be down below in the description. There is no affiliation. So my final conclusions about the product, 
I think you can already tell that I am a bit excited about the vernier throttle assembly that I got. So if you're looking for a cost-effective product that gives you the vernier capabilities, well, this is a great alternative to the high-priced models that you can find out there. So with that said, thanks everybody for joining us on the channel. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. And to all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.